ask? What would Jane Fonda ask? What would Bill Nye the fake weatherman ask? What would Sharon Stoner ask? And they go to these unknown people. I don't know who they are. Some of them I do. They ask Jane Fonda, what would you ask the Republicans tonight? Why don't you ask Jane Fonda what you'd ask Hillary Clinton? So Hanoi Jane, who consorted with the enemy, causing many deaths and many prisoners of war in Vietnam, collaborating with the enemy is a crime, by the way. Here's what she'd ask. In an age where ISIS is raping women and selling them on the slave blocks, here's what this crazy woman would ask. Quote, almost 100 years after women secured the right to vote in 1920 through the 19th Amendment, we still do not have equal rights under the Constitution. You hear this? My question for the GOP candidates, do you support the Equal Rights Amendment? I said liberalism is a mental disorder. Here's Stephen King, novelist. If it's okay to register cars and licensed drivers, why is it not okay to impose similar legal responsibilities on gun owners? Stephen King has always been insane, in my opinion. Stephen King is the crazy characters in his own book. Stephen King is the, is the madman that he writes about. Gary Bauer, former GOP presidential candidate, president of American Values. I don't know who he is. I, I can't even ask the questions too long. Here, look, look who they go to now. Russell Simmons, a hip-hopper. And here, naturally, it's about people of color, not about slaves in the Middle East, not about the burning of Christian churches, not about uh, the real questions facing us, such as, well, here's what Simmons asks. He says, a large portion of American citizens, especially people of color, have lost confidence in our criminal justice system. Many have called for appointing special prosecutors when a police officer kills or injures a civilian. Really? How about a special prosecutor when a black man kills a white cop, Russell? He goes on and says, if you were elected president, would you publicly support special prosecutors in these cases? And what is, a, what is one other thing you would do to fix our broken justice system? Okay. Now, here's a, Susan Sarandon now, they ask. Given this March, the World Health Organization announced that the main chemical in Monsanto's Roundup is probably carcinogenic, carcinogenic to humans. And given that Roundup is still sprayed on corn and soy grown in this country, what is your stance on regulating the use of the herbicide to ensure it's not giving Americans cancer? Susan, why don't you ask about the spray of uh, radical Islam across the globe, you moron, you? Glenn Beck, they ask. Glenn Beck, a psycho. Glenn Beck is the craziest man in the history of the media. A man who used his hemorrhoids to increase his popularity. A man who faked an illness to take a holiday. A man who comes back and says any member of the Tea Party who supports Trump is a racist. You hear this? They ask this moron a question. If the average citizen thinks God has nothing to do with government, who then creates our rights and what makes them inalienable? Oh, come on. He's got the Mormon church behind him. That's, where he, that's why he's anywhere to begin with. And I happen to like Mormons, but I really don't like Glenn Beck very much. I think he's a fraud from the day he started. He is the Margot of talk radio. He's the Margot of the media. A shyster. A tent operator. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We're supposed to be advancing progress, accelerating it. Uh, and if our leaders can put common uh, sense over ideology uh, and the good of the country before the good of the party, then uh, we'll do just fine. Um, despite... Um. The perennial doom and gloom that I guess is uh, inevitably part of a presidential campaign. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're a America's right. winning right now. Winning what? America's great right America's now. America's a loser. It's a basket case better. because of you. So CNN is running the debate tonight. Can you believe this? Now you say, how did the Republicans let that happen? That's because they wanted it to happen. They want Trump taken down. And if I were advising Donald Trump, it would be don't debate. Don't even go there. The empty chair would speak louder than would you being there 
being attacked by the Lilliputians. But look, I'm not advising Donald Trump. I'm not part of his uh, uh, kitchen cabinet, so to speak. <clears throat> That's the big news. The most anti-American and most anti-conservative network is running the debate with two of the biggest losers in the media as moderators. Now, to make matters worse, the CNN geniuses went to some of Hollywood's lowest slime and asked them what questions they would ask the Republicans. They ask ex softcore porn stars, male metrosexuals, America haters, uh, invasion supporters to ask their questions. So I said to you, the real question should be, why is Hillary not debating anyone? Why is she being hidden from the American public? What has she got to hide? And I pose to you, the audience of this show, what questions would you ask Hillary Clinton if you could get her to come out from hiding? There are no open lines, unfortunately. But I want to show you who they went to at CNN. Sharon Stone. And, you know, if you want an example of liberalism as a mental disorder, listen to the question Sharon Stone would ask during a time when Christian churches are being burned, Christians are being killed through genocide in the Middle East by Muslims, young girls are being raped and sold into slavery. Listen to what this mentally disordered individual would ask. Our nation is faced with all manner of heartbreak and chaos that needs our urgent attention. So why are many of you focused on reopening resol resolved issues like a woman's right to choose, the reality of Obamacare as law, and America's long-standing tradition on immigration? My question, if you must go back into these issues, what would you do to resolve the new problems caused by the destruction of settled Lua and on-the-ground reality? Please pick one of these issues and answer specifically. That's Sharon Stone's idea of a question at a time when girls are being so sold into slavery. Let's see, there are others they asked. Uh, David Frum, uh, former speechwriter for George Sellout Bush. Please describe the most recent case when somebody other than your spouse brought you bad news about something you had done in your public life. What was the news? Who told, what kind of stupid question is that? Then they asked the half of a comedy team from Las Vegas what question they would ask. Here's a good one from Tina Brown, media entrepreneur. She says, I want to hear about what your cabinet would look like. Donald Trump has said, for example, Carl Icahn would negotiate with China and Japan, and that Sarah Palin would be at the Department of Energy. What would your cabinet look like? Who would you choose and for what reason? Why don't you ask Hillary Clinton the same question, Tina, the next time you have lunch with her? Here's William Crystal, a long-standing sellout. Uh, I don't even want to, His question's idiotic. I don't want to ask it. Tony Robbins, uh, I don't understand why they ask him. A comedian, Kathy Griffin. Here's a dumb question. You ready? For Donald Trump, I know you're against the Iran nuclear deal. I'm curious to know if you can name the negotiators who are at the table working out the deal other than John Kerry. Can you name 10, 5, 4? You hear this? This is our idea of intelligence. A Yenta from Brooklyn, who they gave a man tan to and a big lipstick, lipstick job. You hear? That's a question she'd ask. For Dr. Ben Carson, this Yenta would ask, for Dr. Ben Carson, can you name three ways the Republican Party has helped the African-American community in your lifetime? Hey, Kathy, let me tell you something. Your parents' politics stank then, and that your parents' politics stink now. Wake up. Girls are being killed in the Middle East, moron. Felix Sanchez, chairman and co-founder of the National Hispanic Foundation for the Arts. I don't even want to read it. Dean Cain actor? Who is he? I heard of Cain and Abel. Who's Dean Cain? All right, let's see what he has to say. Ronald Reagan advocated peace through strength and said we shouldn't trust but verify. Considering the challenges facing the United States now, these quotes seem more relevant than ever. With the civil war in Syria, the rise of ISIS, Russian aggression in Ukraine, and its new activity in Syria, the current administration plans to cut 40,000 soldiers from the military over the next two years and has crafted a controversial nuclear deal with Iran. As Commander-in-Chief, what are your plans for the future of the United States military, and what are your thoughts on a nuclear deal with Iran? Very good question. I don't know who Dean Cain is, but these, that's a very good question. Then they ask a cookbook chef to ask a question. Given the demonstrated role of rebel groups like the Lord's Resistance Army and the Jean Jaweed and the illegal ivory trade across Central Africa, what would you do as president to help secure the region from criminal poaching syndicates? Now, I support elephant rights activists. I support anti-poaching activity myself, but to me it's not the biggest problem. It's the poaching of American jobs, Katie. It's the poaching of American industrial might, 
Katie. It's the poaching of America's dignity, Katie. It's the poaching of the flag, Katie. It's the poaching of our borders, Katie. It's the poaching of welfare by illegal aliens, Katie. It's the poaching of our language, Katie. It's the poaching of our culture, Katie. Here's another moron, a comedian, Fred Willard, never heard of him. President Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Why would the U.S. build one? Can't figure that one out, Fred? I think you should be, be behind four walls with a straitjacket if you can't answer that question. Well, you get the picture. It's all an anti-Trump night. I hope Donald can take it. I, I would advise him not to even be there. It should be an empty chair. Just an empty chair and let the others go at each other. Because I remember what happened during the last Republican go-arounds. That, that, that lout, Newt Gingrich ripped Romney to pieces, and everything that Newt Gingrich, that evil man, did to tear down Romney was then used by the Democrats uh, <clears throat> in the debates, in the final debates. Romney was destroyed by Newt Gingrich, and then, of course, he threw the, th the, th the two of the three debates. Romney won the first debate. He made Obama look like what he was and what he is, and then Romney was told to take a flop. Just take a fall. We can't have, it, have you win. But that's water under the bridge. So right now, Trump is winning because he speaks from the heart. He's not reading a script. He will make America great again. He will build a wall. He will out-trade China. He will, he will rebuild the military. He will decimate ISIS in 24 hours. He will stop the flood of illegal aliens coming in from south of the border. He will stop the flood of Muslims being brought in by Obama from Syria. And now the morons on CNN are saying, new poll puts Trump and Carson neck to neck. That's absurd. They're not neck to neck. The reason they're pitting Carson against Trump is to make it a racial issue. That's what communist slime do. So I ask you, the American people, before we go to our break, what would you ask Hillary Clinton, the invisible candidate? What would you ask Mama Clinton that she's not answering anyone. And remember, at uh, 30 minutes after the hour, we have the Wall Street Journal reporter, Jeff Elder, to talk about a miscarriage of justice in San Francisco, unlike any I've ever seen in my lifetime. This is the Savage Nation. Let's have some heavy metal on the way out the door uh, over there. Anyone, any one of the good ones that we have. I like Metallica a lot. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. In the echo chamber, uh, that is uh, presidential politics. Everything is dark and everything is terrible. Uh, they don't seem like to offer many warming? solutions for the disasters that they perceive, but they're oh. uh, quick oh. to tell you who to blame. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here to say that there's nothing uh, particularly uh, patriotic or American about talking down America, especially Sorry. when we yeah, stand that's as your one of the few sources of economic The strength. most anti-American imaginable is occupying the highest office in the land, trying to tell the Republicans what to say tonight. So the real question is, what would you ask Hillary Clinton if you could get her to stop hiding from a debate? Let's go to Al on WABC. Al, what would you ask Hillary if you could get her to come out from hiding? Hello, Dr. Savage. Well, during her early years when she was working on the Watergate Commission, why was she relentlessly pursuing uh, Nixon and his administration for the tapes and what he was trying to hide in his administration, including the missing minutes, what they were trying to hide? Why won't she give up uh, the emails and what she's trying to hide and why is there such a, a hypocrisy and contradiction to that very good question al stay in the line i'm sending you a copy of government zero no borders no language no culture due out next month we'll get you an early copy of this uh, next bestseller you'll get one of the first of the first printing i'll tell you that because by the time it hits the stores it'll be a second printing they're printing 150,000 copies they know what's coming i know what's coming I know it's coming. Government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Who has been preaching this message since 1994? Michael Savage. This is why I wrote this last book. It's my magnus opus. I want to go back to the questions you would ask Hillary Clinton, because this is a very serious issue, of why we are not seeing any vigorous debate in the Communist Party. Democrat, Socialist, Islamist Party is more accurately descri descriptive of the Democrat Party today. 
Democrat, socialist, Islamist party will not hold debates because they are 